Hi all, welcome to week 3 of our videos, and this one is extra special because in the upcoming week we'll be celebrating National Day of China. Happy holiday to all fans from China! And don't you worry, we're not taking any breaks during this 7 day national holiday. This week we'll be demonstrating JF-17's air-to-air -air combat modes. Before we introduce the radar, I need to talk about IFF. Start active pause. IFF settings are done on UFCP. Click IFF, INT for interrogation, M1, M2, MA, and M6 are for different interrogation modes. M6 needs to be set as special settings in the game. Press code to modify M1, M2, and MA. Click on the arrow to active corresponding mode. When it's on, minus symbol changes to plus. Click here to open interrogation setting. Setting method is the same as interrogation mode. IFF setting does not affect the identification of aircrafts other than JF-17. But because of the current DCS system's limitations, we implemented this IFF system by ourselves. And because of other reasons, we are also changing a lot of other settings. Between JF-17s, different IFF settings will let you kill friendly JF-17s or, of course, get killed by one. In multiplayer mode, not all players will know the specific IFF settings, or the JF-17 on the enemy side may know your IFF settings and pretend to be on your side. And here we would like to know your opinions on this IFF settings method. Would this cause trouble for your multiplayer games? Should we just be using player side to IFF? Please let us know in the comment section. Now that we're done with IFF, let's start with the radar. Let's talk about radar settings and parameters. Intercepting mode defaults at TWS mode. 120 is radar scan width. Nor is radar antennas altitude stabilizing mode. 4 bar is radar antenna scan bars. Below is plane speed, heading, altitude, and weapon status. Auto is radar's frequency setting. Here shows current frequency. Here is the distance scale, maximum at 80 nautical miles. Unpause here. Click Control to enter Raider's setting menu. DCLT is for declutter setting. M1 is Raider's target decay and it's not adjustable under TWS mode. In VS and RWS mode, we can change up to M4. Click MFD U1 to enter Radar mode menu. Under intercepting mode, we can select TWS, RWS, and VS mode. In VS mode, there is no range solution, but it has better performance for long-range targets. At VS mode, you can control approaching rate setting. 12 stands for 1200 knots. And 24 is for 2400 knots. The number on the upper left corner of TDC is approaching speed at 10 knots. We're now using one bar, so we can only detect targets at our similar altitude. Before radar finds target, we need to get our missiles ready. When selecting intercepting mode, plane will automatically select SD-10 missiles. Missiles default setting is auto standby mode. Under manual mode, click MFDR2 to power on. When STB changes to ARM, missile is ready. Click target type to select desired target type.
Here are guns limiter in radical mode. Looks like we detected a target at our similar altitude. Approaching speed is 590 knots. Actually, there are two planes at different altitude. Let's change the four bar to look for the other one. We got it. Use hold this S2 button left. We can cycle through radar mode. Under RWS mode, radar's decay setting is four. So target will have a small tail. After locking a target, radar enters SAM mode. Lock again to enter STT mode. For lost target, there will be 10 seconds of memory time. Pause. Let's check the information on weapon launch. The first green bar is missile's maximum range. The second green bar indicates no escape zone, and the one below stands for no chance. And here is the ASC circle and aiming point. And we're not Tomcat, so we're not going to be looking down all the time. This arrow indicates target is on your left. And here are the target informations. Distance, approaching speed, 11 degrees on the left, time to impact. These information are also shown on the lower left corner of the radar. Unfortunately, our developer have misordered them. These two numbers show TDC to target distance and heading. So we can be an AWACS. Just kidding, we have data link. Unpause. Let's fly to target and try multi-target attack. Switch to TWS mode. Tag the first target. After tagging second target, radar enters DTT mode. The first target is called HPT and the second is called SPT. We can use S2 left to switch between targets. Looks like missile is ready. Pause here. Let's get some pre-launch info. When arrow to the left is shown, we're within maximum range. When the arrow is above target box, it's beyond maximum range. And the lower edge of the box is no escape zone. And we all know that it's escapable. If arrow appears on the right, please switch to gun. The number in the box is TOF. After launch, it becomes TOA. At DTT mode, second missile will automatically attack SPT. Only one target will be shown on the HUD. Attacking second target. HTP gone. Splash SPT. Multiple planes were hurt in the making of this video. Let's get in another plane. See you later. After BVR, let's talk about ACM.
Let's welcome our new recruit. ACM defaults at VT mode. VT mode scans at a 10 by 50 degree box, and it's our boss Luna's favorite. Using S2 forward, we can switch to BS mode. Four side mode scans in a 4 degree cone. S2 right to enter HA mode. HA mode scans the whole HUD area. S2 forward returns to VT mode. Different than intercepting mode, ACM mode shows combat page on the left MFD. This is your flare and chaff. Remember these quantities. This is all you get. Here you can choose auto or manual. Auto means everything will go to zero in three seconds. And program is for manual mode program. You can choose quantity, interval, and repetitions. And these can be set in the special settings. Above program is the current dispense type. In total, we can have five programs. Our target is trying to get away fast. We need to catch up. We're getting close to 10 nautical miles. This is a bit far for VT mode. Let's switch to BS mode. Locked, and this is Luna's new favorite mode. This type of target box indicates that we're locking a friendly target. The green symbol on the radar is a friendly reminder to not do bad things. We don't have missiles on board, but let's show off the guns. This 23-2 cannon is very similar to what MiG-21 has. Click gun to select weapon. Box over gun indicates that it's selected. LCOS appears on the hood. You have to select V to load. It's not a compliment when we said it's similar to GSH-23. When the gun is jammed, please check the manual for MiG-21. You will definitely find an answer. Circle of the reticle indicates distance. One bar is 400 feet. Arrowhead on the outer side indicates approaching speed. One bar is 200 knots. Because this time is a friendly, there will be no casualties. It's time to say goodbye. For our next video, we can either talk about laser guided weapons or introduce data link, RWR, and MAWS. Tell me which one you like more and both is not an acceptable answer. Bye!